This year, as we study the Book of Mormon, I would like to explore the allegories that are found in the Book of Mormon that appear to be a subtext to the stories that are told. The premise is that in ancient cultures, allegories were routinely used as a way to convey ideas simply because the difficulty in writing and conveying ideas. As we read the Book of Mormon this year, I would invite you to consider the allegories that may be associated with some of the stories that are outlined in the Book of Mormon and see if doctrines and ideas are taught that are not readily available on the surface. We know that the Book of Mormon was written under direction of God for the people of the last day. The accounts that Nephi and other prophets that were assembled by Mormon and Moroni were not designed for the people who lived at their time, but were assembled and put together for us. Prophets throughout history have referred to themselves often as being wanderers in a strange land. As we look at Mosiah 13.23, we have the reference that where it says that we cannot err, and this because of our being wanderers in a strange land. Images were often used to convey ideas. We have many of those images that are consistent through Scripture that include things like the tree of life, vineyards, and other images that were designed to convey ideas that oftentimes we in our contemporary society, being pretty literal in the way that we see and observe, misunderstand or, or lose some of the meanings that may be associated with some of these images. One of the most significant symbols that we observe in the account of Lehi and his family's journey through the wilderness is when they are provided with the Leahona. It's not until we have Alma explaining to his sons that we get some glimpse into the symbolism associated with the Leahona, where it says, Now my son, I have somewhat to say concerning this thing which our fathers called a ball or a director. Our fathers called it Leahona, which is being interpreted a compass, and the Lord prepared it. And behold, there cannot any man work after the manner so curious a workmanship. And behold, it was prepared to show unto our fathers the course which they should travel in the wilderness. And it did work for them according to their faith in God. Therefore, if they had faith to believe that God would cause those spindles, should point the way they should go. Behold, it was done. Therefore, this miracle and also many other miracles were wrought by the power of God day by day. Nevertheless, because those miracles were worked in small means, it did show unto them marvelous works. They were slothful and forgot to exercise their faith and diligence and those marvelous works ceased, and they did not progress in their journey. It seems clear that Alma had a perception that the Leahona was a tool that was presented by the Lord to help Lehi and his family on their journey through the wilderness. As we talk a little bit about Lehi's journey through the wilderness, we will explore in more detail the representation of the Leahona. But it does suggest that these images are symbolic and represent the tools the Lord has provided that help us on our journey through mortality. Nephi says, But that I might more fully persuade them to believe in the Lord their Redeemer, I did read unto them that which was written by the prophet Isaiah. For I did liken all scripture unto us, that it might be for our profit and learning. The concept of likening scripture to ourselves, that we can learn and profit from the lessons of those who have gone before, 
is an idea that is clearly taught by the prophet Nephi. That being the case, does the story that Lehi's and Nephi, as they travel through the wilderness, have reference and application on our mortal journey through the wilderness as we seek the promised land and the presence of our Heavenly Father as we return back to Him. Images were routinely used by the Savior and others to convey ideas. You'll recall that the apostles come to the Savior and ask, why are you teaching the people in parables? And his response, as recorded in Matthew, was, Therefore I speak to them in parables, because they sing, see not, and hearing, hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For this people's ear, heart is wax dross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have closed, least at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I would heal them. As the Savior explained the meaning of some of the parables that were taught to the people, it becomes clear that Significant doctrine and messages were taught in the parables that were provided. Likewise, I believe that the allegories used in the Book of Mormon, as assembled by Nephi and Mormon and Moroni, likewise can teach us doctrine and help us to better understand our journey through mortality back to the presence of God. Let's look at Lehi's journey with his family through the wilderness to the promised land, a land of inheritance that the Lord has promised them for being righteous. As they begin this journey, they travel about three days and set up camp, and it's at that point that Lehi realizes that they don't have the scriptures or the word of God as contained in the brass plates. He then sends the boys back to obtain the brass plates as he believes that it's critical for them to have those on their journey. So let's ask ourselves, what do the brass plates represent? It contained a history of the people from the beginning of Adam down till their current time along with the writings of the prophets. I think we could reasonably classify those writings as the Word of God. Now in order to fully benefit from the account that Nephi shares of their family's experience in obtaining the brass plates, we find that they were of great value to them when they internalized or begin to understand them. In fact, we find that there's a great lesson that's taught after they've obtained the brass plates and they read through them and they begin to realize the value. And some are able to understand the things that are taught there and others weren't. And it became apparent that it took effort to fully comprehend and understand these things. But I would suggest that the brass plates were symbolic of the Word of God, particularly as they became internalized and became the foundation of a testimony. To obtain a testimony of Jesus Christ and His Gospel, it requires more than simply being aware of or having read the Scriptures but it requires the internalization to where we now become a witness that we have felt the Spirit and that we can testify that these things are true. And I believe that as Lehi and his family begin on this journey, Lehi realizes the significant importance for them to not only have the Word of God, but have that so that it then becomes available for them to be able to 
develop the testimonies required. We have illustrations of the family of Mulek where they leave to the promised land without the benefit of scripture and we see that it's not long before they lose the traditions that help them to re recognize who they were as sons and daughters of God. So as we diagram the example that is given by Lehi and Nephi as they go back to obtain the brass plates from Laban, we have three attempts. The first attempt is made by Laman, and you'll recall that it didn't seem like any of them were highly excited to go ask Laban for the plates, so they cast lots, and Laman, who draws that lot and goes and asks Laban for the plates. The question we ask ourselves, is Laman a righteous guy? We really know that he had fought pretty much all of the things that his father had asked them to do and was rebellious. So the question we ask ourselves is, can we obtain the word of God in the form of a testimony if we're not righteous or if we're rebellious? Well, in this event, the answer was no. They decide that we've got lots of things left back at our father's home. Let's go gather up all of our riches and gold and take it to Laban, or, and take it to Laban, and see if we can essentially purchase the Word of God. The question that we ask ourselves is, can we purchase a testimony? Well, in the illustration, the answer is no, and I think most of us would realize that obtaining a testimony of the Word of God cannot be bought. Finally, we have the altercation. Laman and Lemuel are very unhappy. They begin to beat Nephi. An angel intervenes. Nephi, being undeterred in fulfilling the assignment that he believes is from God, says that he went being led by the Spirit, not knowing beforehand what he should do. Do, you, do we believe then that obtaining a testimony the Word of God can only happen when we're led by the Spirit. The second part of the story is with Laban, who is a member of the church. He has the Word of God, but we know that he is not faithful. He seems to be wicked. And in this case, Laban, having had the word of God, is killed by Nephi, and the plates are taken from him. In other words, we could extrapolate that to re reflect the possibility that if we have the word of God and we're wicked, we're not righteous, that we suffer spiritual death and the word of God is taken. We have several accounts. There's a really good account in the 93rd section of the Doctrine and Covenants which talks about how we lose light and knowledge as we wander from the path of righteousness. For me, changing the perception of the account of Lehi and his family's journey through the wilderness as an allegory of our journey through mortality and trying to understand the events that Nephi shares with those who will be reading this account in our day can help to gain some insights of how we can negotiate our journey through the wilderness. The symbols that are presented in the account that Nephi provides and later in other accounts throughout the Book of Mormon may provide us with some tools that can help us better understand the influence of the Lord in our lives.